and let's see how we go. So what happens if he's just in one hand? So we do the okay sign yep. around. Just roll the rope. Like rolling repetition for okay. that look like. Beautiful, nice. Yep. Very good, keep spinning. Now, what happens if you keep spinning the rope the direction you are? And you can face that way, your body that way. It's amazing, yeah. Yep. Very good. Now, keeping the rope and spinning the same way it is again. What happens if you face that way? Wow, awesome. Now turn back and face this way. Now, what have we noticed? The rope can spin in a direction, yeah. and our body can move around it. Boom, almost light bulbs. Can you take it over to the other side now in a figure eight-ish fashion? Yeah. Oh, you're gonna get plenty of wax and bits. Amazing, nice. So, from here, can you park it off over to one side and just stay? Nice, same thing. So, what are the points of a compass? There's something you need to rote learn. Rope. Is that north is always under. Underhand is what we're doing now. Yeah. Think of like under their chin or under their balls or something. Right. So the opposite of north is what? Well, north is south. South. Man, you just navigated the dial. Okay. Right. Navigated the compass sort of thing. Yeah. So let me get a little beefy timer. Yep. And I'll get you to just get some repetitions in. Okay. So we've got 40 seconds on, 15 off. Yep. Um, it's not going to be any sort of hard work. Let's just start again doing those single hand rotations as you were. Nice. Now, something to tune into. Notice how the momentum is given to the rope on the down and forward part of the switch, yeah. right? So in a way, I can just put effort into there and just get two and a half revolutions for free, right? Yeah. So just really tune into the sensitivity of the Jump, jump. Yeah, we can like muscle it as well, which yeah. is fun to do sometimes. But just right now, this arm, just tune into that side. Nice. Let's get lefty a turn. You're right-handed. Right-handed, yeah. 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 Alright, so same thing with lefty. You usually feel a bit unco. Your, like footwork and stuff matter much at the moment or it's I think like as you start to when you start off it. it's good to be squared yeah like you can get into any sort of stance that feels good yeah like fortune stances yeah but let's keep on this side while we talk about the green dot have you ever heard of the green dot of the foot no. so the green dot is like the outside fourth and fifth yeah. buckle right so you've got the heel the second toe first second toe and then yeah. fourth and fifth this green dot gives you access to moving in ways that you just can't do anywhere else. Yeah. So if I just kind of stand like this and try and like internally rotate on my big toe, can't get as much as if I green dot it. Yeah. That was a big like, oh, holy shit, I can do all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So timer just went off. Let's orient ourselves overhand now. So we were just doing underhand. Now you're gonna come over, good. Overhand, a little bit easier because it's like throwing, yeah? yeah? So let's get you straight into figure eight. Across the body, good. So if I was to stand here, it's like you're trying to chop me in half from head to balls yeah, okay. each time. Yeah. Shoot, shoot. Nice. So like really coming straight down. Yeah, really like leading with the thumb. Yeah. If okay. you were to, like imagine your thumb had a pencil, you're drawing these sideways figure eights. Yeah. Good. You're a quick learner, so I'm going to give you a bit of an extra cue. Yep. Get a little bit more three-dimensional with it. So like our hands coming closer to our hips. Yep. We're opening up this extra dimension of movement. Yeah. Nice. And so swapping hands in two, one. This green dot thing again. So. Not that you do, but we don't want to just stand like a bit of a, yeah, I don't know, stiff board, like a state of ready and athleticism, yeah? yeah? This green dot, like fourth toe intention has kind of carried over into all bits of my training. Yep. 
and yeah, maybe we'll get into more of that today. Yeah, sweet. Do you have like a background like martial arts, anything? Doing so much grapple stuff. Oh, nice. So, one of the coolest things about rope is it's like your dominant hand gets to communicate to your non-dominant hand yeah. of kind of where, where it should be. And on the flip side, you get to teach your dominant hand how to support your non-dominant hand. You yeah. get to teach your dominant how to be the supporter. That yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. So, you'll be more coordinated in all sorts of different things. What I was talking about just then, it more relates to when the rope is in two hands though. So okay. This is a bit different doing yeah. one hand. And the point still stands, and we'll yeah. get into after this, right now actually. Let's get both hands on the rope and get under the hands for the Is that right? Yes. Is it right like grabbing it or do I need my like, fingers off? Does that matter? So you kind of want it like ball bearings in your hands yeah. so the rope can like move around. Yeah. Now something I want you to think about is the movement is originating from our spine, yeah. but articulating with our hands. Yeah. Right. So this underhand figure eight thing is a gift you'll take with you walking and running and all sorts of things. Yeah. Just thousands of these spirals, and I'm gonna stick with us. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, nice. Other than bodybuilding style training, have you ever done like CrossFit? Did a little, endurance, anything. little bit like not props. I was playing footy like AFL for the last five years. I did like that. Just an arm <laughs> under that. Bit. Taking, taking a bit, but we're getting there. Very nice. So we're a little bit warm now. Let me show you the wall stretch. Yep. So have you heard of Landmine University? As in like the, I've listened to a podcast on like the thing that you listen Yeah, it's a landmine. I listened to um, on Mark Bell. The, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex Canellis. Yeah, might have yeah. been. Yeah. yeah. So do you know what the coil is? This. Is that like a like rotation or something to, like, to do with the hips? Or? Pretty much, yeah. So it's the relationship between the shoulder and the hip. Yeah. And being able to have, say, a short side and a long side. Yeah. And so like, I'll give you a little demo with the pedal. So like, until I got into rotational movement training, I would have been like, clean, lunge, press, sort of thing, right? But that's not using my coil in the most effective way. So now, I would be like, clean, like lunge, got my short side and my long side. If I press, they swap, long side, short side. And so say I was like, like anywhere, you can utilize this coil, long side, short side. Yeah. The underhand figure eight that we do with that is like the walking, the locomotion of it. But what I want to show you is a stretch from Alice Kalina's Landmark University that like unlocks it. So I just had Ben Watson teaching me all this. I kind of knew it already, but then he really fixed me up. Yeah. So this is what we're going to go for. My elbow is basically touching my hip. This side is long. You don't need to drag and tail straight away. Maybe we'll start up here. Yep. But get on the wall and we'll start walking through the cues for it. So, so we're facing this way first or? Yep. Yeah. So we're going to start by getting our hip in contact with the wall. Nice. The leg close to the wall. Just kick it back. So this leg's got the weight. Yeah. Right. This arm, creep it up. We want the stretch to be in our lat. So if you get high and the shoulder takes over a bit, like come back down yep. and do what you can to find the lat. Yeah. Nice. This hand, try and put your elbow in your back jeans pocket. We're going to think of relaxing the trap and the pec minor, just really getting it back and down. You externally rotate that hand. Nice. Now, sink into and get your head over that front foot. Nice. Now, eyes forward like a predator. Good. This one out a bit, yes. Amazing. Do you feel any like cramping action or things going on like on I that short like tightening there? Like a, it's like yes. a, like a lat pull down sort of feeling? Totally. Is it taking over at the top part or is it more down the bottom? More the top. More the top. Nice. So we want to work to get it to that bottom part. Yeah. Hold for like another 10 seconds. I've slowly been activating the prime coil bottom segment of the lat a bit. Yeah. But yeah, you never train it unless you do rotational movement. Yeah. Training. So it's, it's new for me really as well. Matt, so come out of there and give it a go on the <laughs> other side. So, 
hip in contact, that back leg steps out, the front leg is in charge. Arm comes up to find our long side. We're gonna tuck that elbow into the back jeans pocket. Yes, externally rotating that hand, trying to bring relaxation into this point. Good. Long neck, meaning we're gonna tuck our chin and eyes forward, pick your gaze point. Bro, looking like a weapon. Nice. This one I feel lower. You feel lower? Yeah. Wonderful. The other side, not so much, but this side. Something I think we can do a bit more with you. We want the shin angle and spine angle to be the same. Yeah. Lean a little bit more forward with that upper body. Yes. Yes, nice. Eyes, chin, yeah. Go, 10 more seconds, just hold this. What Ben was doing, he was giving me all these cues, touch this, touch this, and then he would start the timer for 90 seconds. <laughs> By the end, I'll just drop down. I was like, oh, bro, it, even just like the pressure on the front, or the left leg here, it's you like... feel it, eh? Cooking. Good, come out of that now. Second time lucky. Second time lucky, <laughs> yeah. Kickstanding that back leg out. Nice. So we're gonna go aim for a similar sensation, remembering that the ideal spot is that lower lat, yeah? yeah. So arms like this, we're gonna come up. You might wanna take one wrap. You'll find a bit of a preference point. Leaning the head over that front foot. Now getting that right elbow into the back jeans pocket. And we're gonna think of all the same cues. So our eye gaze, chin tucked. Head over this front foot. Externally rotate this right arm. Long side, short side, might get a bit crampy. Trying to relax and just really tune into that bottom coil. Bless you, chug. And three, two. And to come out of this, we're gonna express out of it, which means just like go long on that side. Right. So every time we coil, it's like a condensed spring. Yeah. So apparently you just wanna like express out of it. That's yeah. all I've heard them say. So let's make that even on the other side. You coach me through it now. Wrap, pull that one around. Back foot. Up. Start to lean over mm -hmm. the toe. And then the left hand or left elbow to the back pocket and externally mm -hmm. rotate the shoulder. And then trying to sort of push forward over the knee. Mm -hmm. And then gaze up. Mm -hmm. Chin down. Mm -hmm. And the things that I always try to keep in mind is my you seem better at it than me, but this getting that as close as possible and relaxing this part yeah. here. I even felt that relaxing yeah. as I touched it. <laughs> and we're holding another three, two, big long expression out of it. Boom. Nice. So we're building back up to doing these underhand figure eights again. Like these are ones you can really just get lost in for ages. Yep. But to get there, Like this, underneath like that. Yeah. Do this for like 30 seconds and see if you can tune into that back lower quadrant. Yeah. Feeling, yeah? Yeah, so this is the, the underhand figure eight that we're both going for. Yeah. Nice. Grab a fixation point again. So something Ben taught me that I thought was cool is like, if we're not looking at something, we're just like rotating all yeah. willy nilly. But when we actually look at something, now the body is coordinating around that single point. Yeah. As soon as our eyes become whatever, -y, we lose an element of our like weaponization, lethalness. I can even feel it like stretching like the hip flexors a little bit, mm. like in the front. Do you sit a lot like like you're an active fit dude, but then you sit a lot like me? Um, yeah, probably, probably a bit more now that I'm not teaching. When I was teaching, I was a bit more like movement based. Yeah. There. Now I have a little one at home. It's um, yeah, a bit more time sitting than mm -hmm. I would like, even though we're trying to get out and be active. Yeah. But... Nice, very good. So your spine moves better than most. Let's do some more ropey stuff. Sweet. Two hands. So two hands, we're yep. gonna think of each hand having a turn coming under and uppercutting. Mm. Nice, now something else I want you to tune into is the weight shift that the rope encourages you to do. I'll lift my feet up to kind of show you when it's happening, but you should feel it, right? Just tune into that weight shift that it's forcing you to do. 
again, what is the ultimate pattern that this is teaching us? Walking, right? Yeah. Now, any sort of weight shifting movement. Amazing. Let's try and add a little layer onto it. Your right hand's gonna come underneath and then left hand. So it's like a bit of an uppercut. Zoom. Zoom. Nice. Nice. Boom. Ten, nine, eight. Four, three, two, one. Amazing. Come, let's go try and put a few of the bits and pieces. Oh, if we stuff up, all good, no worries. Yep. So, in our right hand, let's get some underhand rotations. And of course, underhand is our north. Yep. Keeping the rope swinging north, let's face east. Amazing. Now, let's face south. Now again, if you're watching on the camera, the rope hasn't changed directions, but our brain's interpretation of the rope now sees it as overhand. Whereas if we turn around and face north again, Troy, the brain interprets it as underhand. If you just keep that in mind, learning tricks and stuff, you can get so many unlocks so much quicker. Come over to your left hand now. Nice. Let's face west. Good. Lefties. It's fun to see the yeah. different differences. You have to think about it a bit. And then let's face our south side. Now facing south and overhand. Cool, bringing that rope over to our left, keep swinging it south. Nice, and let's complete the rotation going through east. Coming back to north. Nice. Now let's get both hands on the rope and see if we can do the same thing. We're gonna be always in the figure eight. Yep. So figure eight just means side to side, one to each side. Yep. Go to south. Beautiful. Very good. Park it on your right side. Like stop it? Yeah. And oh, by park, I mean like you just keep spinning it okay, just as right. we go, yeah? With both hands or right hand? With both hands. Yeah. Let's now face this, which will be our west, facing yeah. that side. And give this a name. This is the propeller. Yeah. Right? So propeller is like the laterals of north and south. Yeah. Nice. Face north. Figure eight. Beautiful. Propeller east. Nice. Whenever you're ready, open up to that south overhand side. Figure eight. Nice. However you want to, get to north. Nice. Now, no, this is a great learning point. I'll be waiting for you to do it. You reverted to overhand yeah. when you come back here. Yeah. So to do that, we have to have offended the role of the rope. Yeah. So like a way to imagine, if you had like a massive ginormous sword, you wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. So we always want to work with the thing of the yeah. rope. So nice, that was fun. Let me pick up the rope and think of what I want to talk about next. So we've done single hands. We understand that we can propel up and go to the other side. We've played with both hands and going side to side. Okay, Matadors. Matadors is like two ticks each side, yeah. and it's named because people that are rude to ball, that thing, right? Yeah. So let's start overhand Matadors. Two ticks each side, and one hand goes while the other one sort of stays behind. So this sort of like Matadors. So just get going and then we'll talk about it. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Nice. So we've got the cadence down. There's no like perfect right way to do it. But yeah. to be a matador, it would be two ticks each side. Yeah. Now, you're very good right now. Play with aiming for the opposite pocket with that hand that swings over. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, give some thought to the hand that's staying behind. As yeah. one is swimming over, what's the other one doing? How long does it want to stay behind? Now, see how much speed you can scrub off and keep the two ticks going. Does that go slower? These are overhand matadors. You can play with all sorts of like, where is my, that hand going to insert the pocket? 
further out? Do I want to do it higher up type thing? Yeah. Um, you can really like go hard or incorporate lunges with these things. Cool, let's go to underhand now. So we'll orient ourselves towards the camera, yeah? Yep. Do your kids at school like the Billy Rock dance? <laughs> yeah, it used to be a thing, it's probably. So yeah, it's kind of like that. Same thing, two ticks each side, but now it's the bottom hand that scoops across while the top hand stays behind. Good, notice how it's getting you shifting the weight of yeah. your feet, that's awesome. Play with that. Awesome, keep exploring, I'm going to give you 40 seconds. underhand that rear coil whereas overhand it's like the front quadrant and overhand back yeah. so if you do workouts with this it's great to finish on underhand because it leaves you more open yeah and external it's like and everything we do is like this yeah. right awesome let's now let's take it right back to the beginning yeah. and i just want to get a, a new lesson through to us so just do underhand rolls with like just the wrist your wrist. Right, now try and get some like shoulder and elbow into it. Nice, now let's like get like some spine into it. Right, now go like full body and you can just like, right? So rope can be either like just the smallest bit or we can integrate more full body down to the green dots on our feet, which are now like doing things all together. Yeah. That's a really cool thing, and something I love with rope is coming to it when I'm absolutely wrecked. So it's like I have hardly anything left to give, and then just like seeing what parts of my muscles want to do things. Yeah. It's really cool like that. Um, yeah. Do you have some more mental power for one more move? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Before that, let's get you just shipping from the overhand matadors. We can stop and propeller on the side and then get underhand matadors and just see you stringing those together. Nice, underhand matadors. Finding our way however feels good to the overhand side. Nice, there's overhand matadors. Beautiful. Yeah. Let's go back to the underhand, yeah. All right, beautiful. So you've got that down. These in-between points, they've been propellers up until now. Yeah. Let's see if we can turn them into dragon rolls. So, rope in your front left toe quadrant. Yeah. Drag, flick. Mm -hmm. Turn, flick. Nice. So we're going to stay facing the same way. Okay. I will do it in the same orientation yeah. as you. So, so yeah. left. Drag, flick. Turn, flick. Those are the moves, right? Okay. Drag, flick, turn, flick. And we just want to keep repeating them till our body wants to put them together. And we'll get going with it, and then we'll do some okay. talking drag. So I don't want it to like hit me though, right? Um, great point. Let's actually aim for it to hit us. Okay. okay. So after the drag, flick, just get it to rest on that leg. Yep. And then we're going to turn the other way and flick back over. Okay. Drag, flick. This is the sticking point for a lot of people and this is the end of the workshop, pretty much. Yep. So we have like sped through. Yeah. yeah. So let's okay. play with that. Right. Turn. Drive along the floor. Flick. Turn. Flick. Beautiful. Keep going. Drag. Flick. So yeah, another mobility thing that I came across was just trying to get that knee below that foot. From that position? Yeah, it's right up. Yeah. Yeah, that was rough. Neck, neck training, do you ever... I've seen like the, uh, 
the iron neck sort of stuff. I get advertised that all the time. Yeah, it's cool. But yeah, for one, I think necks look, it looks alpha as if you've got like a thick yep. neck poking yep. out your shirt. But as well, just like injury prevention and again, That's a big thing around like so. concussion protection sort of thing. Yeah. I remember here, I like, I don't know enough about it, but. Totally, when I was, I had a good fight friend and would nerd out about movement and stuff. He's like, yeah bro, if you're not treating your neck, you just got like sissy bitch neck. I'm like, true, it's like the main protector of you getting hit. Yeah. But yeah, even like one accident or one fall or even just to hold our heavy head up. Yeah. I just thought of something else for you. Yep. So this is going to the underhand figure eight pattern and walking head over foot balance. So our spine's carrying our heavy ass head all the time. Yeah, so I'm thinking of underhand figure eights. I'm trying to be in balance at all points, even though I'm losing it. So thinking of that balance, head over foot, it's just like simulating having a heavy head. So then like when you put it down, it's like, ah, how yeah. light is that? <laughs> so my shoulders sort of... Kind of what we were doing with the stick, but just at the level of walking now. Yeah. Ben had me doing this with a 24 kilo, and I think that gets the kind of signal through more. Yeah. So what you're doing, with the rope now, let's do some locomotion swings. So, the underhand figure eight thing, notice how the rope kind of wants to pull you forward. Just have fun timing those steps. Nice. We're walking head over foot. Beautiful. So I think it was like my second or third week training with rope. I went to this 80s dress up thing with my girlfriend. And I'm like, babe, I think I'm a better dancer from like doing all this <laughs> rope because I had like these new things unlocked. I was in no, like just in the walk is like, yeah, it almost had like a dance sort of element in it. Like yes. those, you see everyone so rigid doing all this stuff. I think it kind of speaks lots. Like, who's more, who are you gonna give more respect to? Like, this guy, sort of thing, or like, this guy, sort of thing. Like, a bit, a bit of swagger, like there's that thick head, like, Conor McGregor style, yeah. or something, I suppose. But, people that, like, are confident in short-footedness, and like, I like how David went, it's like, state of readiness, like, fight, fight, what do you need? I'm ready for it, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Another one. Fist. You know about that? All right, so just swing your arm around, right? So what it feels like. What we want to do is make a core fist so that it feels like your hand disappears, bro. I hope I can give you this feeling. Yeah. So snap the middle finger, then the index. Now we want to squeeze with that thumb and like buttress them into the middle. The idea is that this bone is like connected into one down there. Then just like slap it over up those two. Nice. That would be more in there. So it's a bit uncomfortable as your first yeah. squeeze that. Now. Yeah. So does like it, bro, it's like your hands aren't there. But yeah. then, right, so what are we doing there? We are using the skeleton and turning it into like a closed circuit, yeah. apparently. So instead of just like energy leaks, yeah. it's one closed club thing. Also as well with punching, like triangles, very geometrically sound. Yeah. And so we are like triangulating all the fingers. Fascia turns into like one nice ball. Chug loves birds. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, there's like core fist, B fist, that one's best for locomotion. Um, C fist, this is like just to, like you know how the more tension is in something, yeah. the less leaks there are. So if, for example, if we went to do pull ups and we just had like floppy lower body, it's harder than if you like get tight. Yeah, yeah, it's like doing that, but all the time. And I kind of like it, like similar to barefoot shoes, it's like you get to train it all the time. Yeah. So it's just get that A-OK -okay down to the point where like whenever you make a fist, it just goes to that. Yeah. Everything I'm saying is regurgitating David Wett, by the yeah. way. I'm not original with so this. So would people actually fight? Like, like would totally people throw yeah. hands pretty protected? Let me or? show you what I got Ben Watson to get.
So balancing, oh, no. right? Same sort of thing. It's subtle. And you would need to do it to feel it. But like when you like integrate that fascia, it's like you're just five percent better. Like yeah. something happens. But I know the foot collective that are big on like the barefoot stuff, they're big on like the beams and like mm. yeah, training balance and training training the foot muscles. Bro, so much respect to you for being a barefoot person. <laughs> I had a 